Um, I mean, the th what I'd be that? most scared by was something from World War One. It was a war crime to use it, by the way, it, and it was called the Butcher's Bayonet. Um, so it's a normal bayonet, but on the back end are these uh, ridge hooks. Royal Paladin, thank you and for so, following. Oh, I'm on so, the moon! Uh, and it, so what would happen is when you stab someone with a Butcher's Bayonet, the hooks would hang on to the organs and pull them out when he pulled the, ban the, the rifle out of their gut. It was considered such a horrible way to die that, in some cases, your own people sold you out if you used one. It's... it was, gotcha. yeah. The world is... the world's got so many interesting ways. <laughs> Golden, I am safe! Oh, uh, here's an interesting one. Have you guys... Uh, here's another war story. Interesting tag team. Have you ever heard of the Battle of Castle Iver? Damn it! Yes. Yes, where, Ger where Ver German Wehrmacht and U.S. Army actually fought side by side against the SS, and uh, tragically, the German general who was with them was killed in a firefight in the courtyard. Um, however, if it's if it's any if it's any consolation, though, he w he died saving the French Prime Minister, and he actually like shielded his body from a sniper yeah. shot that was supposed to kill the French Prime Minister. Oh, I missed my chance. Fuck. No, I missed so again! World, world history is wacky, especially in terms of, like, military. Uh, I've got two separate yeah. books that are my favorite books in my collection. One of which is a, like, a great codex of, like, military battles, like, even of schools, and the other one is great military battles. No. no, uh, have you, do you listen to the band Sabaton? Yes! And now that song is in my head. Oh, yeah, no, um, I showed, when I was back in California, I showed Golden Fox Shiroyama. <laughs> Shiroyama something, is like something my... samurai, something like that. Imperial force defied. Imperial force defied. Basic five hundred samurai. You know what I'm disappointed? Just... Hold on. You know what I'm disappointed about in this battle? It's just silly saying this. What? There was no sign of Luna. Sabaton <laughs> 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 is please. such a big impact on my life. I was actually like that was like my plan to do a Sabaton song for Lip Sync Battles at BronyCon. That's what I was going to do. Specifically, I was going to do Spark. And then it got cancelled. I've got, like, I had the fucking, I had the armor, like, Hellenistic Spartan armor. Like, the breastplate, the, uh, the Sabatons, the fucking helmet. I had the tunic and everything. I was gonna, I was gonna have my fucking armor re-up. It's gonna be fucking awesome, but then fucking gone. It went away forever. Riley, what the what the frack is this? Riley, are you doing some fuck shit again? He's posting <laughs> cursed images Look once more. No, he posted a fucking YouTube video. I I know what that thing from the left hand side is. That's Peach from the Mario Kart like the Mario Kart video from Flash Kids. <sighs> Mario, yeah. Okay, I'm on the last Great world. Mario. This was a tough yet hilarious journey, I'm not gonna lie. I have no faith in you. Oh, um, Peter, Bliss, I should mention something earlier. I was in one of the castle stages. I got Vlad almost dying of laughter because I kept missing. I, like, I made sure to cover my mouth, but I almost spit my coffee all over my damn keyboard. <laughs> yeah, no, okay, there's this weird slime thing that, like, knocks me around, and I'm like, God damn it, okay, you know, fuck you, and I try to hit it. Three times in a row, I miss, and he's fucking dying, and I start laughing. The only time I've laughed that hard was back, back in the days when I was trying to be one of them influencer type people. One of the people in my server said, Trent, you, your head has the consistency of an itch mug that they use. Transport honey of ah! And I just lost my shit for some reason. And I spit <laughs> apple juice all over my keyboard. Oh no! Uh, like a uh, No! Oh. There was a uh, actually there was another one sec, sorry, I lost my train of thought, but I wanted to bring up something about Sabaton. Did you see the one about um what is it? The Lion of the North? Yes. Okay. I read a book from 
uh, a Swedish uh, a Swedish mag dark magician known as Thomas Carlson. Ah! And um, he actually raised a good argument because he studied history and religion and all that. That the Lion of the North, which first off was almost like a prophecy, he actually argues it wasn't King Gustavus Adolphus, but it was actually his advisor, a man who was also a highly powerful and influential Swedish occultist who went by the name Johan Burius. A guy who somehow managed to fuse Norse... He managed to fuse the Norse religion and Christianity and made a semi-Christian, semi-Norse set of runes. And the... And following the religion brought you to godhood, and the hero figure in it was a barely remembered, though definitely existing fusion figure that was both Christ and Jesus, and his name was Virgil. Uh, Virgil. Or, Virgil. This is, okay, this is the reason why I fucking love Aeon. I love, like, listening to all, like, this, this kind of stuff. He's a, he's an informative dude. He is... He fucking, like, you... I can I can talk your ear off about fucking fantasy lore. Pretty much any, like, form of fantasy that has dwarves, elves, and shit like that. Warhammer, Lord of the Rings, Witcher, fucking Dragon Age, because I have no life. You know... But... Uh, go ahead. Tell the show? No, I just... Uh, I will just fucking... Tell you all this shit, and I'm just sitting here like, God, I wish I read the point. Teach me your ways, Oracle. Ah! Oh yeah, no, um, I was freaking- I was fanboying so hard when that book came out because Carlson's my favorite, uh, European Norseman, and the intros to that book were written by perhaps the most powerful Norseman on Earth, and the most powerful Norseman on Earth actually lives in Texas, by the way. Uh, his name is- his name is, um, well, he has two names. Uh, Stefan Edred Flowers is his name, he's a doctor. Well, he has a PhD, but uh, so he's not a medical doctor, but he's another doctor. Um, but his other, his publishing name when he publishes like heathen work is oh, Edward Thorson. This again. Um, and holy shit, he's fucking amazing for one thing. And he wrote the intros to it. So uh, the system of writing that I saw from them was first off, they made a book on Uthark, which is an interesting spin on the runes that says. Um, the actual way to interpret the runes is if you put the Fehu, which is the F rune, um, and the first rune, if you stick that at the end and you actually start with the, uh, with Uruz. So the alphabet is now Uthark. And how that alters the meaning of it all. Um, but, uh, then he made the second section nope. where there's a form of Kabbalah where you start out as Norse pagans and then eventually the master oh, no. will oh. tell you... The master will have you learn the Adol Runa, which are the 15 greater runes. And in the 15 greater runes, um, it, they form a runic cross and all this other stuff. You emulate you emulate Burgle to go to the to the divine beyond, to the divine beyond, where you essentially join with the gods with the gods and the others in a heaven state where you are a god as well. And mastery of the Adol Runa will do that. Will allow you to achieve that. Ooh. However, like, um... Yeah. Half of that, but goddamn, that was... Can you, like, read bedtime stories to me? <laughs> yes, I can do that. <laughs> I will pay you. I will pay you good money. No, I, I, I'm just... I'm now having the mental image where freaking Vlad is, like, tucked, snugged in bed, and here comes Peter, he pulls out the book. Once upon a time, back in this year and this century. <laughs> <laughs> No, I just wanted to mention something earlier, and it's kind of silly, like, it does sound silly at first. Um, Peter, have you ever thought about, like, maybe being a history teacher one day? No, I have thought about the idea of, because some college courses do offer esoteric uh, history, but another part of me thought, because what I'm doing is I'm, there's a way that you can make a personal religion in theosophy, and theosophy is where it's the idea of searching for the truest religion, by uh, researching all spiritual and esoteric traditions and seeing what is most common with all of them, their rituals, and their end goals. And whatever is consistent must be universally true. So, um, what I did was I took all the ones from my ancestry and a few of the ones that just piqued my interest. I'm going to make it into one thing, and I've got a blank uh, journal, which I'm going to ascribe in blood and use an occult n numerology uh, system to actually determine its name. 
uh, and I'm going to and I'm going to compile all the information, all the universal information that I know of, so that um, all the useful information works. And it is a philosophy that is purposefully unique to myself. And anyone can do this too. <laughs> I like it what Caesar just said. Wait, what? I have no idea what any of that shit was, but it sounds amazing. Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> wow, okay, Vlad, at least got like, some tissues, okay. Jesus. Caesar the Wicked says, Brothers gathered around, Peter, all sparkled eyed like children. Tell me about drugs again, Uncle Aeon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no. Here's here's the funny thing about that. A year ago, uh, I'll just put it like this. I made a I made one of my shamanic brews using my awesome alchemy. Uh, I made a potion, and yeah, Bliss can verify. I literally do this. I make yeah, I, one of the things I do is I make uh, potions. He makes and potions. one of my potions. God damn it, uh, Riley. One of my potions um happens to have gotten rid of my depression a year ago. Um. And I realized, hey, wait a minute, because I, okay, I admit, I, I've been microdosing LSD to get rid of my psychosis, and it's a fucking miracle cure. Like, it's it's almost gone when I'm under, when I'm under it. And I get more creative. I banged out a script in 10 seconds. From start to finish, in 10 seconds. I conceptualized everything, all the metaphors, all the information I would need, and all the creative ways I could refer to it in 12 different ways in 10 seconds. With the power of L with the power of dropping acid. <laughs> Oi, y'all behave in the stream chat. I mean it. I'm watching you. What's he watching you? Okay, <laughs> what's going on? I don't know. Everyone says they're being inappropriate. I'm watching y'all. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm watching you. Lady's watching you. They're basically this one person was getting into the character of Angel the Buzz a little too much. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> that was a close one. Jesus Christ. Behave, oh, people. Oh behave. my God. Don't behave. We'll... Right, guys, you'll behave. Okay. Oh, yeah, I mean, behave, I can make it. behave as so well. Anyway. Can't be around there. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Uh. So yeah. Anyway, I have. It has come to my. I have come to the conclusion that. Wait, I can just redo that potion I did a year ago, and it might legitimately get rid of my entire psychosis. I, I really it? hope it No! Oh, no, fuck! Who, <laughs> fucking what, ate no, but here's what's awesome about it, like, because I did admittedly cause a scare, and I don't mind talking about this. When I took uh, Acacia Rue, which forces you to be introspective, but when you face yourself, you find horrifying things. So I meet with the, the feminine personification of the entire universe, who then, I, I then say, hey, I've got this problem, I'm really suicidal right now, life is not worth living with it. And I said, Okay, be warned though, this is going to hurt. Uh, but by the end of it, I was no longer suicidal, and I spent seven hours in a heaven state after I called 911, but yeah. Um, um, now, so I took the. Um, what's cool about the San Pedro is um, suddenly um, you meet uh, an entity that implied it was God. It was like a solar deity. It implied it was God. The only reading I could get on it was that it was impossibly larger than the universe itself. Like, I couldn't even get a whole reading. Just that the last thing I could read before I my brain, like, blew to pieces trying to re trying to register it... BRB. Uh, Alright. ...was, uh, it was impossibly bigger than the than the observable universe. Poppin' balloons. Okay. Oh, did you feel small before? No, yeah, but here's the thing is that, like, it... If that is, if it implied it was God, but if that is God, then I have to say this. Christian's taken too seriously. He's adorable. And he's so cute, too. Oh. Okay, then. Um, no, but it's, what's cool about it is that He'll like, you just oh, no. feel this like oh. love, light, and beauty of the universe. And uh, at one point, uh, apparently, I was made aware that he was, he knows you better than you do, and he like guides your conversations. So, what ends up happening is I ended up confessing all I thought was ever wrong about me until uh, I apparently got overstressed and my 
You see, I appeared as Aeon, and his explanation for that was, you view yourself more positively in that form, so I let you so I let you have it, I'll make one to match. I'm like, oh wait, oh yeah, I don't know what you look like. He's like, how about this? And projected an OC just to, for me to communicate. So I got overstressed with talking, and my uh, front right leg, or right arm, I suppose, uh, actually shattered into porc like porcelain. Uh, and then he reassembled me, but he agreed that I had my depression too long, so he just re he just put me back together, but without the depression. And then when I came out of the episode, I no longer had depression. Like, it never came back. Until the trauma in December, but that was trauma, so... Yeah. 